getting too old for this. <laughs> I don't know what's creepier about this outfit. The fact that I'm wearing it or these gloves. <laughs> Since when do cats have three fingers? Halloween, it's the scariest, creepiest time of the year and usually it gets you in the mood to play some spooky games. But the one big question you might have on your mind right now is out of all the outfits I could have chosen from Spirit Halloween, why did I pick Cat in the Hat? I don't watch scary movies and I don't play scary video games. I can't think of a genre I'm less versed in than spoopy stuff. So growing up, Cat in the Hat was the scariest movie I ever watched. <laughs> that movie is terrifying. Whatever. Alright, today is a day of holiday cheer. It's a day of Halloween spoopy scariness and it's a day where we all want to play scary video games. But the question you might have on your mind is what are the scariest games I can play portably on my Nintendo Switch? Here's the thing, that's not a question I'm qualified to answer. As I said, I don't play scary games. I've played quite a few in preparation for this video and pooped my pants on more than one occasion mm -hmm. just so that I could bring some scary spoopy games to your table this Halloween season. I'm just gonna shut up and get on with it. This is a list of 10 scary games for Switch. I'd be have a fantastic time watching it. It's not a video that I would take seriously in the slightest regard. I'm 29 years old, sat here wearing a cat in the hat outfit. If you take this video seriously, <laughs> there's something more wrong with you than me, and that's saying something. Let's start the video! <laughs> the first creepy game on this list actually sponsored the entire video. Call of Cthulhu. Or Cthulhu, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Before we talk about horror video games, I think it's important to pay tribute to where many popular horror stories and writings began. Specifically back in the early 1900s, when authors like H.P. Lovecraft, an American horror fiction writer, wrote some of the most influential spooky tales of our time. And in an ironically, horrifically sad way, Lovecraft actually died at the young age of 46. He passed away to cancer that formed due to his malnutrition. His works never paid him much so he often went weeks without food. With his works so celebrated, even to this day, and monuments being built in his honor since his passing, it's unbelievable to think that at the time of his life he, he wasn't able to even provide for himself. However, his memory lives on through his books and the media that adapted from his works. And one which book and adaptation comes in the form of this first Switch game, Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu has a rich story where a fire that took the lives of a family may in fact be a cover-up that involves the local police of a small fishing town situated on an island in the middle of nowhere. You play the role of an investigator hired by the father of the victim to figure out what exactly happened within the mansion. One of my absolute favorite things about this game is the skill tree, which allows you to increase things like your psychology, your eloquence, investigation, and so on. Leveling these up will allow you to do more and discover more with Within the game on your playthrough. For example, leveling up your psychology will enable you to ask characters different questions and press them in the right way to get the answers you desire. There's different ways of getting the right answer, so you have to level up to your desired playstyle. At first, while this fishing island is pretty creepy, you still feel like you have a certain level of control over the situation. But things quickly go south and you find yourself creeping and crawling around doing your best to survive the horrors underneath this mansion. While some other games are in this video today feel more like a short jump scare filled thrill ride, Call of Cthulhu is a fully fleshed out adventure. It definitely has a bigger budget feel while stacking on the creep factor. And I love that the closer your investigation gets to the truth, the more it's at a price of your own sanity. The fact that the publishers and developers of this game themselves wanted me to make this list video featuring a bunch of different games in celebrational theme for this season, it just goes to show how much confidence they have in their own game to stand out above a bunch of other spoopy games. And rightfully so, so whether you respect the heck out of that fact alone and decide to grab the game, or you want to check it out for me as it does help support the channel, or you want to check it out to continue the love and appreciation for HP Lovecraft's works, you can find a link to this game down below, and I do highly recommend it. Alright, so that's the sponsored game. What other nine scary games are we going to talk about today? Let me see what I got in here. Now, <sighs> I know there's a game in here somewhere. 
Oh, give me that high five. Ah! You know, somehow after seeing a disembodied hand, a bloody knife, and a snake, there's probably nothing left in here that could actually scare me. Ah! Oh, I forgot about that thing. Oh, finally! Ghostbusters! That's not scary, but it's on theme. <laughs> Ghostbusters the video game. It initially released on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and strangely on the Wii. I say strangely because they had to completely change the way the game looked and made it a more cartoony style, which actually looked a lot more like the Ghostbusters cartoon. However, surprising to most people, the Switch is more powerful than the Wii, and finally on a Nintendo system, we're able to play the game the way it was probably originally intended. I had never played this game before, and I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. And honestly, it kind of plays like Gears of War, which is a weird thing to say, but you play it as an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter. You even run holding the A button and you reload using the right trigger. It's not really reloading in this case, it's more recharging your proton pack, but the control scheme and the weight behind it, it honestly does feel like a Gears of War game. The action is non-stop from start to finish. I mean, you're fighting the Marshmallow Man within the first hour of the game, and it really doesn't slow down from there until you hit the end credits. The voice acting is perfect throughout, both in the cutscenes and throughout the game itself while you're playing. Bill Murray does a fantastic job, and I just really love me some Bill Murray. And for those that might be thinking, I oh, were two games into this list, and I have decided to take this video very seriously, and this game does not look scary at all, eh, just wait till you play it. There's actually some pretty freaky themes. And Dan Aykroyd's character, whose name I can't think of right now. Hey, Kim! At one point of the game, you find this creepy nursery area and you hear kids laughing and screaming and Ray tells you that it's dead children. It's creepy, alright. <laughs> hey, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters or just great video games... Ghostbusters the game. This makeup's getting really itchy. Oh, the cat in the hat! Outlast is a game that I just flat out refused to play until I had to make this video. Gotta be honest, I didn't play it long. Outlast is set in a psychiatric hospital. Yeah, that's it, I'm out. Hey, where'd my glove go? The thing I hate about this game is the thing that probably makes it so great. You have no way to defend yourself. You just walk around these hallways and corridors with a camcorder. The camcorder has night vision mode, so that's the only way you can really see things in the dark. You spend a lot of this game running and sprinting down hallways in the pitch black of night, stopping once in a while to bring up your camcorder and make sure you're heading in the right direction. The right direction most likely being away from whatever the heck that thing is! It's just about one of the freakiest things bringing up that camcorder and seeing something standing right there in front of you. The only thing I will say is even in my short time playing this game, I, I got a little sick of having to run around and hide from things all the time. It was creepy for sure, but it became a little tedious having to push past the same monster again and again again to hit a hiding place. But then every time I fold myself into a false sense of security around another corner, I find a jump scare that would reawaken me and remind me why I don't play horror games. Also, it sucks when the camera battery dies. You guys hear something? Much like Outlast, Amnesia is another game I wish people would forget about and stop asking me to play. You get it? Forget about it? Because it's an- In Amnesia, you wake up in a strange castle and surprise, surprise, you can't remember anything. You got amnesia. That was a twist. And lucky you, I guess, you left a note for yourself before you forgot all the things. Unfortunately, all the note says is that you gotta kill a guy and that you're being chased by a guy. Well, damn, Daniel, if you knew you are gonna be able to leave a note for yourself, you think you'd leave a little bit more than that. In Amnesia, you need to deal with losing your marbles. You get easily freaked out and start seeing visions. So, you'd be best to try and stick in the light. Or stick in another Switch game, because this one is... Too scary. <laughs> Whether that be lit up areas of the castle or using your own lantern if you can keep it fueled up. We also have some light puzzle solving here in the form of finding objects and holding onto them until you find out what it is they actually do, you know, point and click style. Now this is a collection pack for Switch. There's a couple other things bundled in. There's the Justine thing, which is a much shorter version of the game and it's weird and has different endings. And then you have a machine for pigs, which is apparently a sequel to the original game. But since I noped out of the first one pretty quickly, I wasn't about to yuck back into the sequel. If you like being spoopy scared, this is one of the better ones to get spoopy scared with. Okay, can you please be quiet? If I've told you once, I've told you a billion times. When the cat in the hat starts filming, you stop going side to side. That's it, Larry. You come back here right now. 
I, oh, that's right. Larry, get back here right now, young man. Just you wait till your father gets home. Whether you're a fan of horror games or not, I think we all have to appreciate what Darkwood managed to accomplish. For me, the scariest horror games are the ones that are played in first person view. You know, putting me in the realistic position of a would-be victim about to die horribly at the hands of an alien ghost poltergeist machine monster pig. Cat in the hat, y'all. <laughs> it's much harder to evoke that feeling of dread from other gameplay styles, especially a top-down adventure style. But again, that's what makes Darkwood so beautifully terrifying. In this game, there's a virus taking over the world, and it's your task to try and escape both it and its infected inhabitants. The first thing that stands out to me is the way your flashlight bounces off the environment, especially so when it shines through the trees, casting a bright light that becomes your only field of view. Meaning, even though this game is top down, See what I do. You still can't see everything around you unless it's in your field of view. This is brilliant because it somewhat brings you back into that first person perspective, not knowing what's around every corner or even right behind you. Unlike some of the other games on this list, you are actually able to arm yourself in Darkwood, either with the items you find around the world or the things you craft for yourself. I'm not able to craft things because I'm a cat, and apparently cats only have three fingers. I'm not sure if one's even an opposable thumb. Oh, yeah, it is. What this game does best is its atmosphere. From the before-mentioned visuals and lighting to its music and sound effects, it creates an eerie and extremely tense ambiance throughout the entire game that constantly keeps you on the edge of your seat. If I wasn't so full of Halloween chocolate weighing me down, making me feel lethargic and lazy, I'd run around this game room and grab every copy of Resident Evil I have in the house. But I am lazy, so here's Resident Evil 5. One of the very many Resident Evil games that's on the Switch now. We have the Origins Collection, which has Resident Evil 1 and the prequel, Resident Evil 0. We have 4, 5, and 6. We also have Revelations and Revelations 2. I'm honestly surprised 2 and 3 haven't been ported yet. What with the new remake of 2 and just the fact that I feel there really isn't that many ways to play the third game. I think I have it on PlayStation 1 and that's it. I have Resident Evil 4 on everything. Even my toaster plays that game. I'd say the fifth game is easily the least scary. They leaned way more into an action-adventure style game. And while I do enjoy it for its co-op action, there ain't a scare to be found in here. Although the first couple Resident Evils will always be the creep especially the first one with its tank controls. That always made trying to escape zombies a terrifying clunky dance. Six flat out sucks, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. There. And then you have the Revelation games, and these might be my favorites, honestly. The, the original was built for the 3DS, so it's a perfect handheld game, and the sequel knocked it out of the park as well. Both of these are really fun games. Not spoopy. They're a little more scary than some of the other titles, but still not really. But hey, there you go. Resident Evil. Zombies, Halloween, they go together like chocolate and peanut butter, which also go really well in Halloween. In honor of the next game, I'm gonna review it with my eyes closed, because in Perception, you can't see it also means I can't read my hobbled together script that I wrote on my phone, so this should be interesting. Perception is great for one reason and one reason alone. <laughs> the visuals. I love the way this game is presented. So, okay, imagine playing a game completely blind, and the only way of getting around the world is by sound and that's this game. I love the concept, but again, it's the way it's presented that really seals the deal. All these moving lines and motions that represent sound bouncing off the walls or wind blowing down hallways is fantastic. And of course, coupled with the visuals, you want the sound to sound soundy since it's a game that relies heavily on sound. And oh boy, let me tell you, the sound in this game is as soundy as it gets. Got great sound. Of all the things I should be asking from a horror game, it probably shouldn't be, hey, do you want to dial up the scary just a tiny bit? But that really is my only complaint. Because there is no scare factor in this game, and more it's just a game you try and find your way around a mansion, it kind of leaves the game feeling empty. Again, I don't even like jump scares and scary things, but I feel like there's a lot they could have done with this game. Like, I don't know, creatures, monsters, things that chase you in the night that you can't see. Maybe because they're so silent, you can barely hear them and so as a result you can't see them. Or maybe even monsters that are also blind and they can't see you unless you make a lot of noise. I don't know, I feel like there's something here in regards to creatures, monsters, scary things and sound and being blind. Instead it's more of a feel your way around a mansion and the story kind of just tells itself to you dealio. Not spoopy. Concept is great though.
Can I open my eyes now? For the longest time, the Switch didn't have any scary spoopy games, and the audience for scary spoopy games was asking for scary spoopy games. And the one they finally got was Layers of Fear. Is it actually that scary? Let's find out. With a name like Layers of Fear, I went in expecting something equal to, let's say, a cake. If each layer of cake was filled with spiders, blood, and copies of Xenoblade 2. Ugh. Visually, Layers of Fear is one of the cleaner looking games on the list. And it plays pretty great on the Switch too. And honestly, the more I say about this game, the more it might ruin the experience for you. As it's a genre, you really need to just, well experience for yourself. If you ever played that PT demo on PlayStation 4 before it was ripped from the online, it's fairly comparable to that. Where you walk around creepy hallways and rooms and things just kind of happen to you and around you. Often screwing with your perception of the world, shifting doors and hallways and messing with your mind. And I gotta be honest, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that scary. I mean, it builds a really fantastic tense environment and I did feel on the edge of my seat the entire game and there was a couple of jump scares, but for the most part it was more of just a haunted house tour where I was walking around a mansion watching things happen. Some of those things were scary, but I never really felt like I was in any danger. Kind of like RGT85. He's scary, but he's not dangerous. Ah! 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 <laughs> Friday the 13th. And Dead by Daylight. I reviewed both of these games very recently in two separate videos that I'll leave down below in the description. But, uh, I feel like I'd be amiss if I didn't at least mention them. I mean, we're talking about a horry, creepy, scary time of the year. I actually sat down and watched Freddy vs. Jason for the first time. And it was both the first Jason movie and the first Freddy movie I've watched. I told you, I do not watch scary things. And I gotta say, the movie was not scary. It also wasn't very good. However, again, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention these games. As you can play as Freddy and Dead by Daylight as well as a bunch of other scary people from Mike Myers to other franchises I am not aware of as I am so noob when it comes to this kind of stuff and Friday the 13th, a game that I, I really, really love. I think it was important that I mention these two on the list even though, again, I did talk about them recently because they're the only games you can play online with friends. So if you want to learn more about these games, I'll leave those links down below. They're perfect for Halloween! Ah, ah. Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> One more time, I do have to give a hand to the sponsor of this video, Call of Cthulhu. Just download it, buy it, play it, and support them for supporting me. It also supports me, and I mean, I don't know, HP Lovecraft, that whole spiel I did at the beginning. I mean, he's dead, so I mean... You won't care much. And if there was ever a video for you to smash like on, it's probably one where I sat dressed as Cat of the Hat for an hour. Subscribe if you want, I don't care. Look, this knife, it's like the blood moves. It's so much cooler than I thought it was when I bought it. I just thought it was like stained with blood or something. Happy Halloween! I'll be 30 next year. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I hope you have a happy Halloween. I swear to- It's not as deep as I thought it would be. Don't you-